Are you ready, Monarchs fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rayner and Coach Bobby Wilder. After putting up 52 points in their 35-point win at Charlotte last week, the Old Dominion football team is now just three wins away from becoming bowl eligible. And with one less day of practice, the Monarchs take on UMass tomorrow night at SB Ballard Stadium. The Minutemen, a much more formidable opponent. What is it going to take for the Monarchs to make it three wins in a row? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder. First coach, a reminder to the fans that this week's game against UMass will be played tomorrow night at mm -hmm. 8 o'clock at SB Ballard Stadium instead of the normal right. Saturday evening scheduled day. Tell us what went into that decision yesterday. Well, this is uh, its almost becoming the norm for us, Bruce. We played a game Sunday, Saturday, now Friday. Two out of our first three home games affected by hurricanes. And I and I talked to our players about this, Bruce, um, yesterday. The, I said, look at our Old Dominion leadership right now. Look, look at what they've handled, Bruce. Obviously, school's more important. There's 25,000 students. There's 3,000 employees. But President Broderick, Dave Harnage, Wood Seelig, to be able to make this change. And I'm grateful to the leadership at Massachusetts. Uh, Mark Whipple and I are friends, their head coach, because it... From us, not that it's as important as a hurricane or anything, but we, you got to condense your practice schedule. you got to change things for your players. Uh, but the way our leadership handled it, uh, very impressive. And they're still handling it as we speak, Bruce. You know, you get your students leaving. you got 20,000 people coming. There's a lot going into it. But because of the threat, Bruce, and how bad it was Wednesday morning, that's when the decision was made because you got a chartered airplane. It's not like when it happened with Hampton, Bruce. It was a 13-mile drive. We could make that adjustment, but UMass had to move up their charter flight, change their hotel, and I'm grateful to everybody for allowing us to play. But on the field, how did yeah. losing that one day of practice affect you, and mm -hmm. how did it affect UMass because mm -hmm. they had to travel? Yeah, b both teams were able to make condense what you had to do. You basically, when we found out, you had to take your Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practice three days and turn it into two. So we made the adjustment, Bruce, by uh, basically making sure our special teams uh, adjustments we make on Friday, our two-minute drill, our red zone third down, we condensed that into Wednesday and Thursday, and, and the kids did a great job with it, Bruce. And as I mentioned, you guys mm -hmm. put up 52 points mm -hmm. down in Charlotte last Saturday, right. an impressive win and really mm -hmm. all three phases of the game. Yeah, this is two weeks in a, a row, Bruce. You and I discussed this last week about momentum plays, and uh, they punted their second series. We put pressure on him. He dropped it. Justin Noy tackles him. Uh, so we get the ball, we, we go score right away, we're up 7-0, second play that they've got the ball, Sean Carter makes an unbelievable diving interception, we go score Washington to Pascal, so between special teams, defense, offense, we're up 14-0, 14-0 Bruce in two minutes, and that's the momentum we've had the last couple of weeks, and the kids are feeling that. Now, you received a lot of national attention last week regarding mm -hmm. the circle of unity, and now yeah. you get ready to launch the Children for Humanity mm -hmm. project. That's a week from today. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, really excited with this, Bruce. The last two weeks have been uh, a whirlwind. It's been 90% positive. It's been about 10% that's been criticism, more so about the kids that wore the Black Lives Matter shirts 90 minutes before the San Antonio game. When we came out 60 minutes before, we were representing the 11 letters across our chest. So that's been about the 10%. But this circle of unity, Bruce, wow. And the point the players are making with this is it's really hard. Give me your hand. It's really hard to be mad at someone or argue with someone if you're holding their hand. You're more tolerant if you're holding someone's hand and you're listening to them. And that's the message they're trying to get out with the circle. We did it the first time ourselves, Bruce, two weeks ago. Then all of a sudden, Monday night football, two days later, here's the Saints and the Falcons. Then a week later, we do it with Charlotte. And then two nights ago, we see the Houston Rockets and the New York Knicks in a circle together, both teams. And I said to the kids, I don't know if you did this, but this didn't start until you guys did this. So they're really proud of that. Children for Humanity, Bruce, unbelievable reception. I hope we have enough space in the stadium. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a week from Thursday, or this coming Thursday, I'm sorry, 3.30 to 5. It's K through 8th graders we're bringing in. We've got our team. We've got other sports teams at Old Dominion. We've got groups on campus. The administration is helping us. What we're going to do, Bruce, is we're going to bring them in, and we're just going to play with them. 
We're going to have fun with them, whether we want, they want to play a board game, they want to have face painting. I want to emphasize it's for girls, too. Uh, the cheerleaders will be there. They can toss the football if they want. And then we're going to take periodic breaks and just talk to them about hashtag Walt, how you can watch, accept, listen, and tolerate somebody, regardless of race or religion. Just help these kids to understand the world they're living in. I'm going to hit you with a tough question. We're going to yeah. get off track here from sure. football. I have heard rumors. You talked about the 10% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. negative criticism that you all have received the past right. couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You're a big boy. Yeah. You can take it. You can take people sure. sending in letters to the editor that say that mm -hmm. Coach Bobby Wilder should be fired because of mm -hmm. the T-shirts he let his players wear. But right. more importantly, mm -hmm. have the players had to put up with this? Because mm -hmm. I've heard they have. Yeah, they have. They have, Bruce. I'll give you an example. Uh, Thursday morning before practice, um, one of our players um, was going through a Chick-fil-A, and then a guy was beeping his horn, stopped him, said, are you an old Dominion football player, he said yes. Uh, he threw a quarter in his face and then made a, an absolutely awful racist comment. And I don't know if I've ever been more proud. Um, I can understand that. You've been proud of your players for the way they've handled it. And the way, the way, the way he handled this. Okay. All right, you play, uh, face a very well-coached UMass team tomorrow, okay? They've played a couple of very, very good teams mm -hmm. thus far. This is definitely going to be a challenge. Let's talk about football. Yeah, the, uh, you mentioned UMass, and, and what I've been saying to our players, Bruce, is that uh, you know they played Florida, they played Boston College, Mississippi State, which, as you know, Florida and Mississippi State are two SEC teams, Boston College, ACC, played a good two-lane team last week um, and played them close. They've played well. They've had some difficulty with consistency at quarterback, which Mark Whipple, Bruce, is, he's won a national championship in college. He coached Ben Roethlisberger with the Steelers when they won a national championship, so he's used to good quarterback play. It's been a little bit inconsistent for him, but both players are, are solid players. Bruce, they beat Florida International 21-13, a team that beat us by 29 points last year. So this is going to be a challenge, Bruce. We've got to continue to play that good team football with those momentum plays we've had. All right. Still to come, Coach Wilder answers questions from you, the fans, in the weekly Coach's Corner segment. And one of your favorite guys, Coach, linebacker T.J. Ricks led Conference USA in tackles last season. But can he take down Nathan Epstein in the one-minute drill? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show continues. We're back with the Old Dominion Football Show here for the one minute drill. The leading tackler in Conference USA, TJ Ricks, the linebacker. So what quarterback, I gotta ask, in the NFL would you most like to put to the turf? I would say Tom Brady. Seems to be a very popular answer these days. Yeah, I really don't. Like Tom Brady that much. What do you remember as your biggest welcome to college football moment? I have to say probably Liberty homecoming. Uh, played a lot that game. It was a very good game, uh, good atmosphere. We came back and won the game. What is your favorite thing to do on an off day? Uh, I just play video games, Xbox. What's the video game you go to most? Uh, 2K, NBA 2K. Play as? Miami. As a linebacker, you got to be fearless. Is there anything you are afraid of? As a kid, I was kind of shook by clowns because I watched it when I was younger. <laughs> and that kind of messed me up for a while, but I'm not afraid of them anymore. What's your favorite thing about being a Monarch? Um, playing in front of a sellout crowd every game. Uh, just running out there, playing for them. And, uh, Trying to get the win. TJ Ricks, he was the leading tackler in Conference USA last year, and he has survived the one minute drill. TJ, why don't you say goodbye to the Monarch Nation? Goodbye, Monarch Nation. Can't wait to see you on Saturday. Time now for the Coach's Corner. Send me your questions to bruce.rader at wavy.com. First question this is Jimmer from Huntington Beach, not California, but Newport News. <laughs> he wants to know red shirting and patience is really starting to pay off on both sides of the ball. And in general, special teams has made huge strides since last year. It mm -hmm. still seems, however, that there are holes in depth that need to be filled. When do you foresee the offensive line, for example, having the same kind of depth, say, as the running backs of the defensive line? Yeah, it's a really good question question by Jimmer and, and, and a good pickup, Bruce. You and I have talked a lot about when you make the transition from 1AA to 1A, 
sometimes you can survive with the skill players like we have, but it's the guys in the trenches because you're, you're going to be so young. You're recruiting young guys, and it takes a minute to get a fifth-year uh, senior you know, that's developed. So we've, we, we're starting to develop at Bruce. We have three freshmen we're redshirting in the offensive line and a junior college player and two in the D line. It's coming. Thanks for the question. Next question. Charles from Hampton wants to know, what do you think the Minnesota Vikings are going to do with Taylor Heineke and how is his rehab from surgery coming along? Have you talked to him? I have, yeah. I've been in communication with Taylor. He talks to Ron Whitcomb, our quarterback coach, almost every day. He's just about ready to come off IR based on league rules. He's got two more weeks to come off and then the Vikings have to make a decision, Bruce, if they don't put him on the active roster, they put him on the practice squad. Anybody can grab him at that point. So we're hopeful they'll put him on the active roster. All right. Well, hopefully he'll do well. Friday night under the lights, Coach, uh, there is always a little extra excitement, I think, mm -hmm. about playing the night game. Oh, there sure is. This is, this is really exciting. Our players, when I, when I told them after practice, Bruce, on Wednesday when we found out, they, they were excited. They said, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. You know, it's night game. It's Friday night. So they, they've handled it well, Bruce, and, and we're excited to play. And I hope, Bruce, with, with work and everything everybody's got going now that it looks like Matthew isn't going to hit us, that everybody will come out and watch us play. I'm sure they will. Again, tomorrow night, Old Dominion hosting UMass at 8 o'clock. The Monarchs' 51st consecutive sellout wow. because some folks may not attend. Tickets may be available at That's the box office and to yeah. students. Tailgate lots will open at 530, two and a half hours before kickoff. The stadium will open 90 minutes at the head of the game as usual. Coach, good luck. Thank you, Bruce. Appreciate and join it. us next week on Friday night for the Old Dominion <laughs> Football Show.